a lot of people think startups is team, team, team. But I'm going to say it's never about the team for a startup. It's actually the founder because guarantee that founder left three, six months later, the entire team falls apart. But the founder is the glue that holds the team together. We're meeting a maker that is working to change the future of delivery. This autonomous delivery robot can take medicine to care homes, hand over parcels, and most recently has been tested by Britain's Royal Air Force to deliver supplies on one of its air bases. This innovation is from the Academy of Robotics. They've launched some of Europe's first self-driving cars, and we're speaking to the founder, William Sacchiti. And congratulations, William. I hear you were named Disruptor of the Year in the 2021 Great British Entrepreneur Awards. What do you think makes a great entrepreneur? Thank you very, very much. Um, Great to be here. I think what makes a great entrepreneur is people who don't quit because it is very, very hard. Um, And you've got to have this sort of obsession with not being done until it is done, no matter what the world throws at you. So I think great entrepreneurs are people who can form a vision and then stick with it through the to the bitter end. How did you get to where you are now, William? Have you always wanted to work in robotics? I don't think I always wanted to work in robotics, but I've always wanted to be, I think I was more obsessed with effecting change or solving problems. And this kind of created this journey which found its way into robotics. So my last company got acquired maybe three, four years ago by Secret Escapes and the data by one of the larger taxi apps there are out there. And so I had a choice. Do I want to do another tech startup or do I want to maybe do something different? And then I realized that in the robotic space, there was a lot of work to be done. So I went to study artificial intelligence and robotics and hence started this company. It sounds to me like making an impact is important to you, William. Is that something that you take into consideration when thinking about what projects you want to take on? Absolutely. I think making an impact matters a lot because um, I think the world at the moment, tech on earth has advanced so far that we can do so many things so cheaply and we've kind of reached the 21st century utopia, but we don't realise it because maybe people aren't as nice. So when I innovate, when we create tech, we think, The world doesn't need a better way to walk dogs or a fast way to book a restaurant. What is the max change we can do that pushes all this forward? So yes, impact is very important for that reason that we've kind of got there now. So what do we do next? As an inventor, where do you get your inspiration from? I think it's mainly past experience. Um, So I grew up in Southern Africa and my sort of unique upbringing had me learn certain things and see certain ways, certain ways in which things are done. And over time, this slowly begins to sort of form a, a model where when the time comes, it all seems to connect. And then this idea comes where you might find yourself uniquely qualified to solve a very specific problem because you saw six or seven different things in your youth that led up to that moment where you can now innovate around it. Um, An example being our self-driving cars at the moment. Um, Had I not done a startup many years ago where I invented these digital solar-powered bins and to get these digital solar-powered bins in the streets involved a lot of negotiations with local authorities. And the result is now we speak with government and uh, police and uh, all sorts of organizations are more governmental. And had I not got that critical experience over a decade ago, I don't think we've been able to do so much as we've done today. So it all links up, the dots connect later and you don't actually quite see it. Have you always known that you wanted to be an inventor? So I remember we were, I think I was 10 years old, where we're in class and we're discussing careers and things that people do in a subject called social studies. And we're then all asked to explain what we'd like to do. And I'd just read a book called Pioneers of Medicine and a book on Edison. And I was so inspired thinking, I know what I want to do. I want to be an inventor. And when I was asked, I stood up in front of the class and said, I'm going to be an inventor. And to my dismay, the teacher then used me as an example saying, listen, everybody, inventors are people like Newton when Apple fell on that. It's a discovery is an accident. So you can't have a job where you're just going to accidentally discover stuff all the time. These are accidents. So what you need is a solid career, perhaps be a work in a bank, 
or be a doctor. Your mom's a scientist, right? Get a job as a lab technician or something. That's a good, respectable career. And so the culture of where I grew up was, was shaped around, you need to find something to do, never that you're the creator. Um, and so I went and complained to my parents and said, teacher told me I can't be an inventor. And I remember my mom being a scientist so also, yes, um, do you know what? It'd be good to become a scientist or something, but inventors don't, aren't really a thing because it isn't really a thing in our, where, where, where I grew up at least. And so, yeah, I thought I could never be an inventor. It wasn't until more recently, I was looking at the number of patents we filed, some of the most complex patents in artificial intelligence. And I thought, wait, have I actually become an inventor? And realized that um, whilst I was discouraged in my youth, through no fault of anyone at the time's time, just the time and where the world was at the time, I found myself becoming that very thing that I aspired to be at a child of a very young age. So tell me a little bit about how you put together the team at the Academy of Robotics and also what would you say your leadership style is? Yeah, I want to ask this with a very controversial opinion. So a lot of people think startups is team, team, team. But I'm going to say it's never about the team for a startup. It's actually the founder because guarantee that founder left three, six months later, the entire team falls apart. But the founder is the glue that holds the team together. So when I went to university, I found a, some of the PhD students and the PhDs and my professor who are all experts, absolute experts in artificial intelligence and making machines drive themselves. And so, yeah, together we thought about it and realized, you know, we could make a self-driving car today. Probably won't be ready for three years. And we all left and put this company together. Um, but again, it's a delicate balancing act of personalities where I think if we were acquired by a corporation within the first three years, I don't think we would do the same thing at the same pace um, because we have a very unique working style and that's bound by a founder. And I think it's, it's what matters most to most startups. The founder is the glue that holds it together.